My name is T.S. Sudhir and you are watching Study with Sudhir, your digital classroom. We are looking at the Tempest Act 4. We have already done explanation video number 1 and in explanation video number 2, we will be looking at the masquerade scene which by far is the most complicated part of the entire Tempest. A lot of references which you need to be aware of especially if a passage from this part of Act 4 comes in section A of your examination paper but before I start just a reminder just a nudge just a subtle reminder that you need to subscribe to study with Sudhir I would hope that there are a whole lot of ISC students out there who would be interested in very detailed and comprehensive explanation of not just the tempest but also of all the poems and the stories which are all on the playlist of study with Sudhir. So just a reminder subscribe press on the bell icon so that you can get all the regular notifications. Closer to the examination we will be doing detailed character analysis of all the protagonists of the tempest and also do a revision with questions and answers of the poems and the stories. Okay, let's get started. What happens in this part of the scene? Let me explain that first because that will make it easier for you to understand what the different spirits who are uh, dressed as different goddesses are actually saying. Now, Prospero, you saw towards the end of uh, the first explanation video, he calls in Ariel and asks him to summon the other spirits to perform a mask for Ferdinand and Miranda. Now, soon these three spirits... Uh, appear in the shapes of the mythological figures of Iris. Now, Iris is Juno's messenger and the goddess of the rainbow. You need to remember who is the goddess of what. Okay, so Iris is the goddess of the rainbow. Juno is the queen of the gods. Okay, and Ceres is the goddess of agriculture. Okay, and it is Ariel who is dressed as Ceres. Okay, C-E-R-E-S. I hope you have the book in front of you. Now, this trio performs a masquerade celebrating the engagement of the two lovers that is Miranda and Ferdinand. Now first we see Iris entering and Iris asks Ceres to appear at Juno's wish that is Juno is upcoming so you need to be there while Juno appears and to in order to celebrate a contract of true love. Okay. Now Juno and Ceres subsequently together bless the young couple with Juno wishing them a lot of riches and honor while Ceres wishes them natural prosperity and uh, abundance. Now the spectacle of the masquerade impresses Ferdinand the prince of Naples a lot and he says that he would actually like to live on this island forever in the company of his father-in-law and his wife right. Uh, so rare a wonderful father and a wife makes this place paradise he says. Now Subsequently, Juno and Ceres ask Iris to fetch some more nymphs and reapers to perform what they call a country dance in the attire of people on the island, the way, you know, the people on the island would naturally be, right? Uh, now, just as this part of the dance, the masquerade begins, Prospero suddenly uh, reacts differently. He's kind of startled because he has remembered that he has not kind of dealt with Caliban and the conspiracy which has been hatched by Caliban along with Stefano and Trinculo to get rid of Prospero. So he kind of then decides to send the spirits away and tells Ariel that they need to deal with Caliban as soon as possible. Okay, so that is as far as what happens in this part of the scene is concerned, right? Uh, so let me kind of uh, start with the paraphrasing all the important words. So please write it on a separate notebook. Okay, um, Iris says, Ceres, most bounteous lady, thy rich lees of wheat, rye, barley, wedges, oats and peas, thy turfy mountains where live nibbling sheep and flat meads, thatched with stover, keep them to stover them to keep. Right? Uh, so Iris is saying that I have come to announce that Juno has asked you, Ceres, who is the goddess of agriculture, as I just told you, goddess of the fields and the earth, to leave your rich farms of wheat, rye barley, oats, peas and also fodder, which is means fodder, the grassy hills where the sheep nibble, right, as in feed on, you know, the you must have seen the sheep and the goats, they generally kind of feed on the grassy hills, the meadows in a sense, the flat meadows which are covered with fodder, fodder as in stover means fodder, to keep them well, you know, to 
ensure that they are uh, fed. Your river banks that have been shaped and strengthened to prevent soil erosion. Okay, I'm going very slow deliberately so that you can even pause and take down notes or run this video on slow speed because these paraphrasings are important in case if you get a passage from this part of Act 4, you would need to know all the minute details. Uh, which the rainy month of April trims with flowers at your command. Hest means command. In order to make simple crowns for cold nymphs. And you must also leave the groves where the disappointed and the rejected bachelor lurks. Right? Uh, the phrase which has been used out here is uh, when he is rejected by his love being last lawn. Okay. And the well pruned vineyards and the rocky seashore. I would suggest that you just rewind it so that you take down the detailed notes because I took a lot of time kind of ensuring that we do not leave out any word out of here. The sea marge sterile. Marge means the margins, the shore of the sea. The seashore sterile and rocky hard. Okay, so basically what Iris is telling Cyrus is I am asking you to leave all these places that I have mentioned and come and play on this plot of grass when, where the royal presence of Juno arrives with her peacocks. The peacocks are the birds which kind of uh, draw her carriage, her chariot, where her peacocks, they are the birds which are sacred to Juno, draw her chariot at high speed. I mean, her Peacocks fly amain. A M A I N means at high speed. Okay. Now, Juno's chariot appears suspended above the stage. Now, that was one of the uh, dramatic uh, conventions, especially during a masquerade, right? Uh, for the deity, that is in this case Juno, the goddess, to appear suspended above the stage. Okay. So that was how it was usually portrayed to show that you know they are of a uh, someone who are to be put on a pedestal so they would be suspended above the stage not on the ground so juno then enters right above the stage and slowly begins to descend so that is to kind of convey that they have come from not a part of earth but from outside of earth and she is approach Ceres her to entertain so iris says come here rich Ceres, because you need to entertain juno now Cirrus says, now Ariel enters as Cirrus. The other, there are other spirits who are dressed as Juno and Iris, but Ariel himself is dressed as Cirrus. So uh, Cirrus says, greetings to you, rainbow messenger, referring to Iris, because we just, I have just told you, Iris is the goddess of the rainbow. Okay, so greetings to you, rainbow messenger, who never disobeys Juno, uh, who is the wife of Jupiter. Okay, with your golden wings, you sprinkle dew drops. Hail many colored messenger that never dost disobey the wife of Jupiter, who with thy saffron wings upon, upon my flowers diffusest honey drops refreshing showers. That with your golden wings you sprinkle dew drops and refreshing showers on my flowers and arch your colored bow over my bushy fields. The bosky acres refers to bushy fields and bare plains, the unshrubbed down means bare plains like a beautiful scarf to decorate my earth so cirrus is also paying compliments to iris just as iris had paid compliments to cirrus okay uh, uh, why has your queen juno called me here to this short grassed spot because obviously where cirrus came from was obviously much more bountiful in terms of lush green uh, area so she's asking why has your queen that is juno called me here to this short grassed spot iris says a contract of true love to celebrate now this is a phrase that you would do well to remember and use in your answers to describe any relationship of miranda and ferdinand that it is a contract of true love okay that is sought to be celebrated by these spirits so Iris says to celebrate a marriage of true love and give a gift to the two lovers and some donation freely to estate on the blessed lovers. Cyrus says, tell me heavenly bow if Venus or her son. Now it gets a little complicated out here. Okay. As thou dost know, do now attend the queen. Now why is 
Ceres referring to Venus. Now, Venus we know is the goddess of love and Cupid is the god of love, right? So, Ceres is asking Iris, tell me Rainbow, do you know if either Venus, the goddess of love or Cupid who is her son is accompanying Queen Juno? Okay, and there is a reason why Ceres is asking that. Ever since Venus, okay, since they did plot the means that dusky disc my daughter got. So, Ceres is saying ever since Venus and her blind son because uh, Cupid was blind, okay. Uh, and that's how uh, it's generally portrayed as part of mythology also. Ever since Venus and her blind son plotted a way for the god of the underworld, and here the god of the underworld who is being referred to is Pluto. Okay, Pluto is the god of the underworld. So, ever since they plotted a way for Pluto to steal my daughter away for half the year, I swore I would never speak to them again. That is to Venus and to Cupid. So, Ceres has an issue with Venus as well as her son Cupid. Now, the reference here is to the episode where Pluto, the god of the underworld, kidnapped the daughter of Ceres who was called Persephone, P-E-R-S-E-P-H-O-N-E, P-E-R-S-E, Persephone, okay. Uh, and Ceres believed that it was because of the lustful influence of Venus and Cupid that the kidnapping, the abduction took place. Iris assures Ceres that Venus of her society be not afraid. So, Iris now reacts to what Ceres has said. So, Iris is telling Ceres that Venus and Cupid are nowhere in the vicinity. They are nowhere in sight. Venus and Cupid had indeed hoped to foil the purity of the impending union. You remember what Prospero had warned Ferdinand earlier in Act 4 that there should be no physical intimacy before the marriage is performed between Ferdinand and Miranda and Ferdinand had promised that he would not cross the line. So, Venus and Cupid had indeed hoped to foil the purity of the impending union between Miranda and Ferdinand but did not succeed because Ceres, Juno and Iris have kept the gods of lust at bay. Okay. Now, if you remember the conversation as I said the earlier conversation. So, this is in that sense connecting to that, to the first part of Act 4. And it would seem that through this part of the masquerade, Prospero is trying to emphasize the point further uh, that underline the point that that kind of physical intimacy is not to be encouraged, will be frowned upon, is not something which is desirable. Okay. So, it seems to be a plot by Prospero, a design by Prospero to send yet another message to Ferdinand that this is something which is not to be done. Okay. Now, Iris says that, you know, you don't, don't be afraid of her company. I met Venus. Uh, he is referring, I met her deity, that is Venus, as she was with her son on her way to their home on Pam Papos, P-A-P-H-O-S. Okay. P-A-P-H-O-S, that is the birthplace of Venus in Cyprus. Okay. And they were traveling in a carriage pulled by doves and that's what Venus carriage is. The carriage of Juno is pulled by peacocks, the chariot, the chariot, the carriage of Venus is pulled by doves. They were planning to pull a mischievous trick on Ferdinand and Miranda who have sworn not to sleep together, uh, no bed right as you can see out here, uh, till their wedding day till Hymen's torch be lighted. Hymen, as we have learned earlier, is the god of marriage. We learned that in the first part of Act 4, right? But their trick failed, okay? Venus, referring to Mars's hot minion. Now, why uh, is Venus called Mars's hot minion? Because Venus was the sweetheart of Mars, the lustful sweetheart of Mars, the god of war. So, Venus was the god of love, Mars is the god of war and Venus was known as the sweetheart of Mars, okay, according to mythology. So, Venus went home again and her waspish, waspish means, waspish means spiteful, spiteful, referring to Cupid, her spiteful little son, that's Cupid, broke all his arrows. You saw, you see Cupid is always shown as someone who is shooting arrows in order to encourage love between two people, right? He broke all his arrows and promised and swore that he will never ever shoot them again. 
but play with sparrows like other little boys okay but play with sparrows and be a boy right out now uh, why is the reference to sparrows because sparrows were associated with his mother venus and considered symbols of lecherous behavior symbols of lechery so these three passages that we have done so far extremely significant i hope you are taking down notes revise them as many times as possible so that you are absolutely comfortable now let's move on cirrus says great queen juno is coming i know her by her gait you know gait means the way she is walking by the the posture in which she is walking i know that it is juno juno how is my generous sister now the chariot has descended on the stage how is my generous sister come help me bounteous means generous come help me uh, bless this couple so they will be prosperous and have many children they may prosperous be and honored in their issue issue as in children cirrus joins juno in the chariot which rises and hovers above the stage so it kind of is suspended in air and they sing and then there are these songs sung by both juno as well as cirrus juno says honor riches marriage blessing long continuous and increasing early joys be still upon you juno sings her blessings on you basically saying that may honor riches marriage blessing long life and unending joys come to you the young couple and juno is singing her blessings to you cirrus also joining earth's increase foes and plenty now uh, foes and essentially means abundance you know abundance that's why plenty barns and gardeners never empty gardeners means the granaries you know where there would be food for eating right uh, vines with clustering bunches growing uh plants with goodly burden bowing spring come to you at the fathers you know may spring return to you as soon as the harvest is over so basically uh cirrus in that sense is kind of revoking the curse of the winter winter is seen as a curse a curse lasting about 4 to 6 months so once the winter is over that's when spring months come so it's kind of revoking the curse of the winter right scarcity and shall shun you cirrus blessing is on you so cirrus also blessing uh, the young couple growing crops and large harvests barns and silos full of grain wines heavy with clustered grapes plants training under their fruit okay now ferdinand is very impressed with these songs he says this is a majestic and a very harmonious charmingly you know harmonious vision are these spirits may i be bold to think these spirits are these spirits that we see before us and prospero replies yes and prospero obviously very pleased with the fact that ferdinand is impressed he says yes they are spirits who i have called out of their prisons to perform according to my wishes according to my whims ferdinand says let me hear ever let me live here ever saying that let me live on this island forever such a wonderful father father as in father in law referring to prospero and a wife referring to miranda make this place a paradise now juno and cirrus whisper among themselves and send iris on a mission they want him to undertake a particular task and prospero says sweet now silence juno and cirrus whisper seriously there is something else to do hush and be mute or else our spell be spell is smart now prospero immediately tells ferdinand who is talking who has just said that you know i would like to live on this island forever he says now be quiet because i can see that juno and cirrus are whispering about something serious and there is something else to be done so be silent or my magic spell will be broken basically all this masquerade is being conjured as a result of prospero's own magical prowess okay iris your nymphs called knights of the windring brooks with your such crowns and ever harmless looks leave your crisp channels and on this green island answer your summons juno does command come temperate nymphs and help to celebrate a contract of true true love be not too late so once again a contract of true love being repeated as a phrase now this part iris is saying that you water nymphs okay uh, referring to naiads Uh, who live in the wandering brooks with seaweed crowns and innocent looks step out of the water and come join us on this grassy field juno is honoring you juno does command come sweet nymphs and help us celebrate the wedding of true two true lovers do not be late and then some nymphs enter the stage and then iris continues now you sunburn sickle men referring to tanned field workers sunburns means tanned 
sickle men as in field workers you know who are doing works related to agriculture saying that who are so tired of august labors you know august labors as in tired of you know doing that field work in the month of august get out of the dirt and come rejoice with us out here make holiday put your straw hats on have some fun and dance with these young nymphs now straw hats is also referring to is also in keeping with the naturalism of the island in terms of how the look will be on the stage they're all wearing this rice straw hats so it kind of also is in keeping with the atmosphere on the island they're obviously not going to wear a three-piece suit on the island right so several field workers enter at this stage they're all properly habitated as in they're properly attired appropriately and they join the nymphs in this graceful dance at the end of which prospero suddenly reacts with a very startled kind of an expression and uh, he says oh i had almost forgot that foul conspiracy referring to Caliban's conspiracy, right? Caliban's horrible conspiracy to kill me of the beast Caliban and his confederates, confederates as in his accomplices, Trinculo and Stefano. The moment they plan to act is almost here because he realizes that, you know, it's a time when they are almost going to come to kill me and that's what we will see towards the end of act four. So he then he says to the spirits, good job, well done, avoid no more and he asks them to vanish he asked them to disappear so that's what happens as far as the masquerade is concerned i hope i've explained to you well enough and it's clear please revise it because the more you revise it it's complicated let me tell you it wasn't easy for me also so it is complicated you need to write down these notes and revise it many times before you will be absolutely comfortable with it it is an important part of the tempest now let me just tell you uh, the importance of the masquerade. Now, the masquerade as a tool, as a dramatic tool on stage, it grew in popularity during the reign of Elizabeth I and lasted well into the 17th century. Now, the song that we saw sung by Juno and Cyrus uh, is basically a universal statement of love, of harmony, of peace, uh, of brotherhood, of serenity and it is an ideal to be hoped for, right? That this will be the ideal world where we can coexist. But for it to kind of come true, for it to be achieved, you actually need what is called responsible action. And what we have seen so far in the Tempest is a whole lot of conspiracies. 12 years earlier, what happened with Prospero? What is happening now on the island by Sebastian and Antonio? also by Caliban and Stefano and to an extent Trincolo. So it is not the kind of world of conspiracy that seems to pervade the world of Milan, Naples and to an extent on the island as well, right? So, but the fact that this particular ideal world disappears towards the end of this uh, uh, masquerade uh, also shows that it is an illusion that this kind of an ideal world actually does not exist and this is not really the reality the harsh reality is the palace conspiracy the palace intrigue the conspiracies that are hatched by different members of the royal elite and not this kind of an ideal world which ferdinand is obviously extremely impressed by now let's do an analysis of what this masquerade seeks to do as far as the tempest is concerned now if you saw the first part of act four we saw prospero discussing the issue of sexuality the fact that you should not indulge in any kind of premarital sex that you should not have any kind of physical intimacy before your marriage is performed he's telling his prospective son-in-law ferdinand that in so many words so after it's significant that this mask is introduced after the discussion that that took place between Prospero and Ferdinand, right? So basically, while masquerades were popular forms of entertainment in England and also to an extent in other parts of Europe in the 16th century, 16th and 17th century, uh, uh, basically it is also to what I said, reaffirm the point that Prospero made in the first part of Act 4, okay? So the moment he gets the goddesses, etc., it's almost also to kind of give it a more of a divine underlining as it were to what Prospero had earlier advised Ferdinand, 
Okay, now masks as we have also seen in the Merchant of Venice, you know, during which uh, Jessica had eloped with uh, Lorenzo. Uh, it basically featured masked actors uh, and they would kind of be uh, performing acts. They would be dressed as people uh, from different uh, mythological features and also folklore, right? They would all be wearing a mask. So, the idea would be to hide their true identity right so in this particular mask performed by prospero it features juno who is also the symbol of marriage and family relationships and cirrus who is the symbol the goddess of agriculture right so in that sense uh, cirrus symbolizes nature growth uh, prosperity and in a sense since it's involved with nature it also kind of concerns rebirth right so all these elements um, rebirth uh, prosperity, growth are all aspects which are associated with a marriage also. You know what he keeps on saying, Iris keeps on saying a contract of true love, right? Now the blessing of the union which is done by both Juno and Ceres is a blessing on Ferdinand and Miranda that uh, we do wish to kind of tie your marriage to kind of social propriety, right? Because the one of the words used is honor, you know, that you need to be proper about various things associated with marriage and post marriage. And there is a sense of harmony that they are blessing the couple with, right? So, uh, Shakespeare, through this particular masquerade and the manner in which these goddesses appear, seems to suggest that he looks at marriage as a foundation of a proper society. First, what uh, Prospero says to uh, Ferdinand and the fact that he wishes marriage for both Ferdinand and Miranda. Also the fact that of course he looks at, uh, looks at it also as a political tool but also by this mask he is kind of giving it a slightly uh, what shall I say uh, with the blessing of the goddesses is kind of divine blessings on this couple and on this marriage uh, which is performed between Ferdinand and Miranda right. Uh, and of course, the most important point also is to uh, show that Prospero is a fantastic magician. He is capable of conjuring these kind of lavish spectacles with which Ferdinand is extremely impressed on the island. So that is the kind of prowess as a magician that Prospero has. So that's as far as this part of Act 4 is concerned, Act 4 Scene 1, um, which is explanation video number 2. Explanation video number three is extremely significant because there has there is a speech by Prospero which many people think it is written by Shakespeare himself and it could well have been Shakespeare himself speaking through Prospero. So that particular part of Act 4, Scene 1, extremely significant. So I'll see you in explanation video number three. There will be an explanation video number four in which we deal with the conspiracy of Caliban and how what really unfolds as a result of that conspiracy and of course act 5 which we'll be doing in five parts deals with the entire climax so see you in explanation video number 3 god bless you thank you very much